We're standing here in Hamilton Pool Preserve, the iconic landmark of western Travis County, to really understand the source of water to Hamilton Pool. And for as many droughts as we've gone through in Central Texas, this pool has effectively remained uh, the same elevation. It hasn't ever gone dry in recorded history. Well, how is that? Is it fed by groundwater or is it purely surface water? So the study we started is uh, looking just at that question. What is the source of water to Hamilton Pool to provide such a perennial pool that feeds a very unique ecosystem down Hamilton Creek? This is a stratigraphic column showing the stacking or layering of rocks from youngest to oldest at depth. And what I'll be talking about and showing you are from the Lower Glen Rose, the Hensel, and the Cow Creek. Those three geologic units form the Middle Trinity Aquifer. If you know where the rocks are porous and permeable, you have a better understanding for where recharge occurs. You have a better understanding about the flow of groundwater. And all those are really necessary if you're gonna understand the system so that you can try and preserve spring flow. I'm standing here within a uh, garden spring. This is normally a pool. I'd be up to about four feet of water, but we're in to a multi-year drought. We're trying to understand how water uh, infiltrates into this small aquifer system and ultimately discharges into other springs that are down gradient. And Pogue Spring, for example, or Hamilton Spring, or some of these other springs that are perennial in nature, that is, they flow year round. We're in the upper part of the watershed. We're also in the upper part of the aquifer. This is the Lower Glen Rose limestone. It is subject to dissolution. That is, uh, rainwater can dissolve the rock and create voids and, and little caves, and that's karst. And so here's a good example of, of the Lower Glen Rose limestone, and you get these uh, really odd looking erosional features that are essentially like cave formation. And that karstic interval, that interval has lots of holes in it, is sitting right on top of a very tight, muddy unit that's right down below. And so water doesn't tend to infiltrate that. And so when water gets into the ground, up gradient, flows along the karst, it comes out uh, at springs that are right at this interval. We're in the upper part of the watershed where these springs tend to be ephemeral. That is, they go dry when we enter drought conditions because there's not a whole lot of of storage space. There's not a whole lot of reservoir, if you will, in this rock. It's only really within these karstic intervals. The area that contains that is not that large. And so as soon as we enter drought conditions, these karst conduits tend to drain first and they go dry. So from a rainfall event, some portion, small portion of that water goes into the ground, will discharge here, flow along the surface, go back into the ground, into a swallet or a recharge feature we'll look at, flow along the ground into the Cow Creek limestone, and ultimately come back out as a, a spring flow at Pogue Springs. Sort of have this in and out and in and out pathway that a, a water molecule can take. We are downstream of Garden Spring. Just below the spring at Garden Spring was that really tight mudstone that was uh, helping to hold up that water. But we're now further down gradient, and so erosion has breached this limestone unit. And once the uh, water has gotten through this, it's now into an interval that is more porous and permeable and allowed for the infiltration of water. So we again have this pathway of water that was infiltrating above the spring at Garden Spring flowing through the karst conduits, discharging in that spring right there, making its way to this point here, infiltrating again into the ground, and then we'll ultimately discharge at Pogue Spring. So here we are at, in Hamilton Pool, and we're at an outcrop of the Hensel Sand. And the Hensel Sand, again, is part of the Middle Trinity Aquifer. The Lower Glen Rose Limestone is above us, the Hensel Sand, and then the Cow Creek Limestone is below us, and that's where the spring interval is. If you go about a mile to the east, this actually transitions into more of a limestone. So this area, that is the study area of, of Hamilton Pool, is, is unique for many reasons, but one of them is because the Hensel here is a true sandstone. And so we think that plays a significant role in allowing water to, to be absorbed or recharge and get to the Cow Creek and feed these springs. We're standing in the lower part of Pogue Creek, and this is where the creek has incised through the Lower Glen Rose, through the Hensel Sand, and now into the Cow Creek Limestone. And so those three units form the Middle Trinity Aquifer, but it's really this Cow Creek Limestone that is the principal aquifer unit 
uh, within the hill country. So it's a good source of water supply for wells, but it also sustains spring flows in these areas. And you can really see the difference between this unit and the Glen Rose limestone that we were looking at near Garden Spring, in that you can see the layers and the different uh, holes, the porosity in this rock is very extensive. So there's a lot of storage in this rock. It's a lot of capacity to hold water and transmit water as well along karst conduits. These types of spring complexes are found really within each of the watersheds in this region of western Travis County and even northern Hayes County where you have these creeks that drain to the west towards the Pedernales. They cut through the Cow Creek limestone and create spring environments and then you get really deep incised canyons like at Hamilton Pool where you also have unique uh, riparian areas where you have things like cypress trees and sycamore trees, places where there is perennial water available. So they create these beautiful little uh, ecosystems. In the lower portion of the Cow Creek, the rock texture is very different. We have lots of shale and silty rock units that give it uh, this irregular pattern of erosion. So you don't have the same porosity and permeability. And you'll also notice this texture here, and these are oyster beds. And so these represent a deeper water offshore type of environment instead of a nearshore high energy environment that is the upper Cow Creek that again is the primary aquifer portion of the Middle Trinity Aquifer. That's where all the springs are, are located. We're below that interval now. These rocks are a lot tighter, if you will, a lot less permeability and porosity and these oyster beds represent offshore uh, type environment like a bay or estuary that you would find today in the modern Texas Gulf Coast. So we're standing here at Hamilton Pool Preserve and we're above the pool itself and the rock we're looking at is the uppermost part of the Cow Creek limestone and in this location there's a spring and we call this edge spring and that's sustaining the flow that we can see right down here and that's then going off the pour off into the pool. Part of this study to understand the source of, of the spring water has also been to just quantify that, that amount of spring flow and therefore what's going into the pool. The concern is, is that, you know, under drought conditions in particular, is when there are wells that are drilled into this very limestone that is the source of the springs, when wells are drilled in there and when they pump water, the source of water to those wells will be what's called the capture of spring flow. So in other words, what's being pumped out is what ultimately won't come out as spring flow. You have to understand where your source area is for the springs. And if you understand that, then you can understand um, the effects of wells that are upgrading of, of these springs. And so we've delineated the source water areas, but also we've quantified the amount of spring flow. So that gives us a water budget. And so once we understand that water budget, we can start to understand the, the effects uh, that pumping has and potentially how we can manage the, the pumping to minimize the effects. You know, we'll always have an effect on, on springs just by simply using uh, water wells, but there may be ways that we can mitigate the impacts to the spring flow. And it's the spring flow that's sustaining the pool level down below us in Hamilton Pool. Everything you can see in outcrop here is the Cow Creek limestone. Again, that is the primary aquifer unit of the Middle Trinity Aquifer. We have recessive beds down deep, just as we looked at it over at Rymer's Ranch. We saw those oyster beds that are offshore in environments. And again, lower Cretaceous. This is a long time ago, 100 million year old rocks. And as you go up the sequence to these bigger cliffs, uh, they become near shore environments. That's where you have cross beds, uh, essentially beach type environments. And that is the really porous limestone that is transmitting and storing the water that feeds the springs that ultimately feeds Hamilton Pool.